Hello and good morning, CTS 265, Section 840 students for the Fall 2016 semester at Anne Arundel Community College. This is the CCMP route course, and this morning's video tutorial is going to be a continuation of our uh, dive into OSPF, or the Open Shortest Path First Dynamic Routing Protocol. Uh, we've taken a look at a number of the features of OSPF, the path selection, the metric calculation, and now we're going to continue that conversation to look at another important aspect of OSPF, and that is route summarization. Now, again, to be clear, and I, if you're shaking your head saying, I know exactly what he's going to say, then I've done my job. Remember, when we're talking about summarizing IP address information, we are not talking about the Type 3 Summary LSA, right? Remember, those are two types, two mutually exclusive completely separate types of summaries, okay? So when we're talking about IP address summarization, that's what we're sort of used to here from CCNA where we take uh, the networks that we have listed over here and we're gonna find the interesting octet, we're gonna find out, figure out the CIDR notation for the subnet mask, and then we're gonna come up with our IP address summary. And that is very different than the OSPF Type 3 LSA, which is provided by an area border router, in this case, Router 1, and then propagated into uh, the other areas that Router 1 would be attached to. And that would be a summary of other OSPF areas. So in other words, Router 4 will have Type 3 information about Area 1, and it'll also have some Type 3 summary information about Area 2. So again, the focus in this module here uh, is going to be on performing IP address summarization, right? Manual summarization. Uh, because there is, actually, this is a great point, there is no auto summary capability in OSPF. We do not do auto summarization like we do in EIGRP. All right, so the first thing that it wants us to take a look at uh, is on router one. And obviously, router one is going to be receiving quite a bit of information here. We're already in privilege execs. So let's say show IP route OSPF. And as you can see, we've got quite a bit of OSPF information here uh, in terms of entries in the routing table. Now, remember, uh, router 1, if I were to say show IP OSPF, OSPF interface, uh, and let's take a look at, I can't remember the interface, so let's just say show IP OSPF interface. Uh, when we take a look here, you'll see that it's connected uh, to area 0. It's got another area 0 connection there, but we're also connected to area 1, right? So we're also in area 1. And then we should see, there we go, before I go right by it, area 2. So this is definitely an area border router. If I say I show IP protocols, uh, you can see it is an area border router. Uh, and the same thing would be true. We Oh, actually, we don't have any external information here, but you would see autonomous system boundary router or autonomous system border router in the case that we had external information. So this is an ABR. And what we're going to focus on now is how do we sort of shrink down the size of the routing table as well as the size of the OSPF database. Because again, take a look there at the database. We've got quite a, f uh, a, a large number of entries in here uh, that again uh, are summary network link states. Now again, it's, I, I can't stress this enough because this is always a common point of confusion, causes lots of confusion where you hear or see the term summary and you're thinking, oh, IP address summarization. No, we're looking at the OSPF link state database. Uh, and so that is a type 3 LSA. And you'll notice we're getting one of those LSAs, type 3 LSAs, for each of these networks here, right? For each of the network segments that we're seeing there. And so we can also save some space uh, in the link state database uh, if we were to perform IP address summarization. Now, the key point here is you can only perform summarization on an ABR 
or an ASBR, so on an area border router or on an autonomous system boundary router or um, again, a router that would have external information coming from another routing protocol uh, or it could just simply be external information coming from, you know, you're redistributing static routes into uh, OSPF. So uh, again, we can shrink this information down, but it has to be done on an ABR or an ASBR. And there is a difference in the way that you do it. And the reason why, why do you think we can only summarize at an area boundary? Why can't I jump onto router 4 over here and throw a summary address on there for all that routing information. Exactly. The link state database needs to be identical for all routers in a given area. So router 4 and router 1 need to have identical link state databases. So if I go into router 4 and try to do a summary, the LSAs that router 1 is receiving are still going to be the LSAs router 1 is still going to receive the same LSAs. But I'm trying to change what's going on over here. So you can't summarize, unlike EIGRP, and this is one of the major differences when you compare and contrast EIGRP and OSPF. EIGRP is distance vector. Remember, I can summarize an EIGRP anytime, anywhere, for any reason, and I can go ahead and go for it right and do my summary in OSPF it's very very different we're in an area where everyone in that area needs to have the same link state database the identical information throughout the area and if information in the area changes right where the interface goes up or the interface goes down we saw what does that do exactly that results in a full run of the shortest path first algorithm throughout the entire area. And so that's why you can't simply just jump onto any given router and say, oh, well, I'm going to start to summarize this information. We can't do that. It has to be at the ABR or at an ASBR. All right, so now let's go ahead and perform the summarization here on router one. But before we do, we have to kind of go old school here and take a look at the uh, information that we're going to be summarizing. And so we're going to summarize these networks here and these networks here. Well, uh, we need to take a look at the interesting octet, right, which is going to be that octet right there. And then we've got this octet right here for the summary information coming off of area two router three. So again, very simple. Uh, 20 in binary is going to be, and I think we've got 128.64.32, so 16, and then 0, 20, 0, 0, is that right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So there we go. So now it's pretty easy, right? We just kind of fill in the gaps. 21 would be, add the one there, 22 is going to be 0, 1, uh, 1, 0, is that right? 16, 20, 22. And then 23 is going to round us out here with 1, 1, 1. So we take a look at this and we determine where does it not match? Where do the bit positions no longer fully match? And it's right down that boundary right there. So in addition to those 8 bits, these 8 bits, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 additional bits match. So 8 and 8 is 16, plus 6 is 22. Um, and so we know we're going to have a CIDR notation of slash 22, and the slash 22 is going to be uh, 255 and dot a decimal, 255.255 dot, and I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so it's going to be 128 and 64 is 192, 224, 240, 248, 252, is that right? 252, that looks good. All right, so that is for the summary for these networks here. Now let's take a look, and boy, they've given, <laughs> given us quite a bit of, of a work to do here. So 32, we know 128, 64, 32, 0, and then 1, 2, 3, 4. So then 33 is going to be 0, 0, 0, 1, 34, 0, 0, 1, 0, 35, 0, 0, 1, 1, 36 is 0, 1, 0, 0, 37, 0, 1, 0, 1. Again, I'm just, these are, these are all the same, right? Because we're starting at 32, 
So and the numbers are just going up. So those bits would all be the same. So we left off at 32, 36, 37. So 38 would be, uh, what is that? 8, 4, 36, 37, 38, 0. And then 39 is 0. What do we have here? I've lost track. Uh, 32, 36, 37, 38, 39. And so then we look at this and we say, where do they no longer match? Well, we can see they no longer match right there, right? Because we've got some ones and then some zeros in those bit positions. But that 32 bit position is on. So eight bits here, eight bits for the 168. And then one, two, three, four, five additional bits match. So this is going to be a slash 21 with a subnet mask and dot a decimal notation as 255.255 dot. Um, what are we doing here? One, so 128, 64, 192, 224, 240, 248. Dot zero. Now the question is, what is the prefix going to be? Well, over here, right, it's going to be 192.168. Dot, and we've got some bit position values that are on here that we need to take into consideration. So 16 and 4, it's going to be dot 20 dot zero slash and we said 22 there we go and then down here we have only one bit position on kind of makes it easy for us it's going to be 192.168.32 dot 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 zero slash 21 and so there is our summary address information and so th this is takes much longer to sort this out than it does to actually plug the commands in so let's jump back on to router one and wrap up our summarization task here so we're going to go into global config and unlike eigrp where we would do the summary um and uh, we would do it on the interface level with ospf we do it in the global router ospf one in the global ospf configuration section and we do it based on the area, right? So I can be doing summaries for different areas. So if I were to say area one range, and this is where we put in our summary, right? And if I do a question mark, you can see here, IP address is going to be 192.168. Uh, what do we say? 20.0. And then the mask, not the wildcard mask, but the subnet mask. So what that statement in English is basically saying is for area one information in the range of 192.168.20.0 with that subnet mask, I am summarizing that information. If I come over to, uh, we looked at router one, if I come over to router four, let's see, does that information show IP route OSPF, is it getting summarized? And let's take a look. There we go, I have a slash 22 for the 192.168.20. If I were to say show IP OSPF database, what does that look like right now? Did we save uh, any room in the database? And you can clearly see based off the age here, there is my 192.168.20.0. If I wanted to see more specific information, I could say show IP OSPF database summary, and I can even drive it down to the 192.168.20.0. And here it is. Here is the type 3 LSA that router 1 has injected into area 0. And we can see right here the link state ID. That's the network number. There is the network mask, right? There's our network mask. And we know that it's a uh, 28 bits, uh, or the length, I'm sorry. The length is 28 bits. It's not 28 bits. I'm drawing a blank on the length right now. Yeah, because our CIDR notation is a slash 22. And is the length of time? No. Yeah, I'm drawing a blank on the length right now. I apologize. But our subnet mask is a slash 22. And the advertising router is router 1. So that is the specific information that is being sent in. Now let's go ahead and put our area range command in. So area 2 range and we know that this was 192.168.32.0 but we had a different subnet mask it was 255.255.248.0 so we'll hit enter 
Now on router one, I could do the same thing. Do show IP route OSPF. And take a look. We see the summary, but we also have what? on the area border router. Right, we have all the more specific information. It's only when I come over to router four, show IP route OSPF, that what do I see? All of those inf all those routing, uh, or all of those prefixes coming from area uh, one and two have now been consolidated down to two summaries. And here are those summaries. So again, if I were to say show IP OSPF database, for, and actually summary, for 192.168.32.0, there we go. You can see we've got the network mask as a slash 21. We have the advertising router as router 1. Here is the link state ID, right? That is the summary network number that we're using on this summarization. All right, so... Let's come back and take a look here, and let me make sure we've got everything covered. I believe that was it. Yeah, so then we talk about the null zero advertisements again on router one. It's the same concept as EIGRP. Because again, remember, router one, who is applying the summary statements onto its global OSPF config section, in this case, could be saying that, hey, I know that I'm telling you I'm representing, I'm fronting, like I know how to get to all of these networks in the 192.168.20.0 uh, slash 22. But if for whatever reason, a more specific, or a, a request comes in for a, a network that I don't have a more specific match for, then we're, we've got problems. But we don't because of that null zero statement. Because what that null zero statement says is, if I get an advert, or if I get something that comes in for 192.168.24.0, if it fell within that summary range, it goes to the bit bucket. It simply goes to the black hole, and that is going to prevent loops. And we're simply going to black hole that traffic and send it to the bit bucket, which is null zero. Because again. Router 1, in some cases, may have a summary that is so big it doesn't have all the more specific net member networks that make up that summary. So if traffic shows up to Router 1 that's trying to get to a more specific network that Router 1 just doesn't have, even though it's advertising the summary that would include that member network, that traffic is simply going to be dropped. All right, well, that is summarization for... Uh, inter-area information. Now, when we go to do uh, external summary type activities, we do not use the area range command. We're going to be using a different command that will look a little more familiar to you like when we were using EIGRP. All right. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys this evening.